Okay, welcome back. Uh, let's continue on this same subject. There are some comments uh, on the chat. I'll begin with those. Okay, so Gertrude is saying I was just taking everything for granted. And Lucy is saying, sister, we sometimes say, why did, why did this happen? Okay. Uh, we say, why did this happen? Why did God allow this to pass? Why did God keep quiet when, um, yeah, some wrong things are happening in our nation? Uh, we were to pray to bring God's authority. Okay. Yes, uh, sister. So, as I, I've been sharing, we know that we have a full deputization, a proper deputization. So when God um, put us here on the earth, he gave us dominion and we can exercise that dominion uh, through our prayer. Just a moment. Yes. Um, Daniel is saying, what should be the duration of prayer? What should be the duration of prayer? There's no such hard and fast um, rule, Daniel. But we will talk about the importance of discipline in prayer. That's when uh, we can allocate some time for prayer and it will be very helpful. So there, there's no such rule, like you should pray for one hour, two hours, five hours. We don't find any such rule given by God. However, for the sake of disciplining ourselves in prayer, we can set aside some time and say, I will pray for one hour uh, every day, and I, I will pray for five hours during the weekend. So uh, all this we can regulate on our own. I, I hope uh, I have answered your question. Any anything else? Any other thoughts? Fine. So we've understood that as God's people, I'm just using the word church. When I say church, it's everyone who's born again. So it's not, I'm not referring to local church. I'm from this church. I'm from that church. No, we are all part of the body of Christ. We're all part of the kingdom of God. And the Bible tells us that the church, remember Jesus said, um, I give you the keys of the kingdom. And then uh, yeah, he said, um, I will build my church. I will build my church. Who is the church? Every born again believer. The church is you and me. We are the church. I am the church. So he will build his church, meaning all of us. And he says, the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That tells us that the church or the body of believers is a very powerful spiritual entity. We are not a weak spiritual entity. You know, oh, the church, so sad. Look at the church. As far as Jesus is concerned, he said, look, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So what is Jesus saying? The body of believers is strong, spiritually very strong. And they are so strong that the church will destroy Satan and his kingdom. The gates of hell refers to Satan, refers to the demons. Jesus said that, I'm giving this kind of authority to the believers. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we must remember, church, that we are blessed with uh, dominion and authority that Christ Jesus has given us. And we have to use it. You tell me, what is the use if we don't, uh, uh, you know, we, we don't utilize the authority that has been given to us? So we may have the keys to the building. Let's say the owner of the building says, I'm giving you the keys. You can come anytime. You can use the facility. Um, you know, 
use it. But if I take the keys and I keep it in my cupboard, I nicely lock it up, okay, and I'm not using what has been given to me. Or let's take, for example, somebody gifts you a, a wonderful laptop. You can do so much on the laptop. But what do we do? We close the laptop, pack it off in a nice bag, keep it on a shelf, look at it every day. What's happening? You've been given the authority. You've been given the opportunity. We've been given what we need. But what's happening? We are just not using it. When we're not using it, whom should we blame? God gave it, right? He already gave us what we need. But we didn't use it. So that can happen in the lives of believers. We know, yes, I have all this, uh, uh, you know, I can exercise my authority against the devil. I can pray a believing prayer and receive answers to it. But I'm not using it. Why should I use it? Then whose mistake is it? Whose fault is it? It's not God's fault. He already gave us the authority. So this is what we must uh, awaken to or realize that God wants us to partner with him. He's saying, come on, I've given you the keys of the kingdom to bind and to lose, right? And I'm building my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. So we have to take our authority and we have to start releasing it. So today, what am I trying to tell us? Prayer is one way. When we start praying, we can release that authority that God has given us and things happen in our lives. Things happen in people's lives. Now, the question that most of us may have had uh, in the last session when I was telling God wants us to partner with him, God will do the work, God intends to do the work, but he wants a human being to pray you know, and to do whatever he wants us to do. We may have thought, God is already powerful. Why does he need my help? Isn't it? Yes or no? Yeah, that's the question we all have. God is all sufficient. Okay? With one word, he can create. He has created. He speaks and he creates. Why does God need me? Why does God need a human being? Self-sufficiency. We use that word. Self-sufficient means God is sufficient by himself. He does not need an additional being to come and, you know, help him and strengthen him, encourage. No, he's fine. He's God almighty. He's already self-sufficient. All right. But you notice that there are scriptures in the Bible, like Jeremiah 29 and verse 12. It says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. So God is inviting us and he's saying, I know I can do it. I know I have all the authority, but I am asking you, come, pray. So prayer is God's invitation. God has designed prayer. Even though he can do it, there is a process. There is a purpose. There is a way in which God works. And he's inviting us as human beings and he's saying, I want you to pray. So it's by choice, God's choice, that he wants us to pray. Okay, uh, And we all know there are scriptures like, call unto me and I will answer you. I will show you great and you know wonderful things that your eyes have not seen. So God is calling us. He's saying, I want you to pray. There is a purpose associated with prayer. So I want you to engage in prayer. Think about the life of Jesus. Even Jesus could have uh, said, oh, Father God can do everything. Jesus became a man. So in your uh, subject on Christology, you will study that Jesus was fully God and he was fully man. So as fully man, he was limited, just like us, isn't it? Uh, normal feeling the, the weather and um, experiencing all the things that human beings experience. So Jesus became 100% man. He could have just imagined that Father God will do, Holy Spirit will do. But we find that Jesus himself had a life of prayer. Why is Jesus praying? He's already son of God. Why should he pray? 
remember we have been given the authority we can release our authority through prayer and so jesus also knew the way elijah prayed the way daniel prayed jesus prayed there is a reason why we must pray the way god has designed prayer is such that god can do but he wants us to also pray and partner with him so the life of jesus is an amazing testimony for us we will study uh, about the practice of prayer in the life of jesus how much he prayed you know he prayed in the morning he prayed in the night he uh, prayed through the night he prayed for days so jesus also engaged in prayer and he taught us uh, in uh, luke 18 he said men should not be discouraged but they should pray okay we must not be discouraged but instead look to god pray always speak to god communicate with god so prayer is god's design and uh, god wants to engage us you know when uh, at home uh, sometimes we see and this is not the exact example okay just for our understanding i'm saying like if a parent or a or a, a mom or a dad they are cooking they may tell the child who is just learning to help them uh, around at home they may say okay uh, keep the plates or cut this vegetable now we can ask the question why the parent can't cut it the father can't cut it the mother can't cut it why should the child cut it because it's a partnership not that they can't do it they can do it but there is a process there is a system there is a design where they want the child to engage and it is somewhat similar can god not do it can god not heal the people can god not uh, save people he can do it but the way he has created the world is he saying you pray to me you call unto me right and then i will show you a uh, great and wonderful thing so prayer is god's design who invites us to pray god is inviting us to pray so this gives us a lot of confidence so if god god has planned it it should work if i engage in that system it has got to work okay so uh, uh, one particular scripture very very powerful ezekiel chapter 22 and um verse 30 it is there in your notes you can uh, look into it if, if, if your notes are open right now so ezekiel 22 and verse 30 It says so I sought for a man among them who would make a wall and stand in the gap before me and on behalf of the land that I should not destroy it but I found no one So there is a situation where you know people uh, are against God you know in a in a region in a given region or a community they are against God what hap- what is the what is the result of sin what what happens when we sin what's the result punishment uh, d- death death okay the wages of sin is death scriptures tell us that so when we engage in sin there are consequences or results outcomes so what is god saying in this passage he's saying look at these people they are not living righteous so what should happen whatever needs to happen next they deserve punishment they deserve uh, to have the consequences but what is god saying in verse 30 he saying look i know the results what they should face i know that but look at the heart of compassion that god has he saying i'm looking for a man who can stand in the gap Okay so why is god looking for a man to stand in the gap in the same verse that i should not destroy it that i should not destroy the land i should not destroy the people so when is it that god will not destroy the people if he can find one person who's ready to pray that's the kind of partnership don't you think it's amazing that uh, to pray for so many people how many people does god want to intercede in this verse in this passage is yeah only one person he saying if one person will pray i can forgive if one person will pray i won't destroy but so sad the passage says 
he found no one. Okay, sometimes we feel, I'm only one person. What will happen if I pray? Maybe, you know, at least 10 of us must pray or the whole church must pray. Yeah, there is, we will study about corporate prayer and the power of corporate prayer. But even if one person is praying, mighty things take place. Right? In this situation, God is saying, I won't destroy the land if I find one person to stand in the gap. Stand in the gap is simply intercession or prayer, praying for the people. Uh, so this is how you know, we understand partnering with God in prayer. So you and I, we may be sitting here today, right? We are in Bangalore and uh, we think, how can, I, how can I make a difference to my city? How can I make a difference to my people? Just pray. Start to pray. Even one person standing in the gap, what does it say? God listens. Right? God touches the lives of people. God will uh, cause things to change. And that is the kind of power that prayer carries. I'm sure you would have heard testimonies of uh, so many uh, such people. One person praying for the whole land and uh, a revival began from there. We will, we will talk about you know men and women of God, people like Evan Roberts of the Welsh revival, young man. Uh, and he, just, he was just praying, praying, praying. Some people told him also, why, <coughs> why do you want to pray like this? Okay, it, it looks funny. You're praying all the time. But he knew that God had called him to pray and he started praying. And we know that a revival broke out because it started with Evan Roberts and slowly many more people joined him and a revival broke out in Wales. So that's the Welsh revival. Like that, there are many stories. You can talk about people like John Hyde. John Hyde is known as a, a, a man of prayer uh, or praying Hyde was his other name because he prayed so much and uh, he he blessed the uh, you know north of India like the Punjab region that's where he lived and uh, it, it made a tremendous impact on the people around one man who started that prayer movement and who began to pray so never think what can God do I'm only one person I'm praying what difference can it make look at that the scriptures tell us in Ezekiel 22, God's not looking for a, uh, uh, not, you know, if there's a crowd, it's great, but at least one person. One person prays, it's like partnering with God and God can do what he wants us to do, right? Or God can do what he wants to do. So let's understand, you know, prayer is partnership. God is waiting. Uh, when are they going to pray, you know? When will they speak to me? When will they ask their requests? He wants to. He wants to bless. He wants to save. But he wants us to pray. That's when things will happen. So this is uh, the understanding of prayer. Uh, what did we say this, this morning? Our prayer is talking to God. All that. But let's remember, prayer is also partnering with God. So when we partner with God, it is very powerful. So, uh, why should we pray? Okay, we simply ask the, the question, why should I pray? The answers to that question, this is a system that God has created. I already read at least two scriptures where, uh, you know, God says, pray. Okay, call unto me. You will come and pray to me. So, God has created this design, which means it will work. Anything that God creates, do you think uh, like it, it will be successful? The system? Correct. It will be successful, right? So God is saying, prayer is my design. If you pray, you will see the results of it. So that is why we must pray because it's God's design. Second is, uh, through prayer, we can release our authority. Okay, so do, do we want to conquer the devil? Do we want to um, uh, be victorious? Do we want to overcome life's challenges? Do we want to take up the position that God originally, you know, when God created man, what did he say? You have dominion. I want you to be the ruler. I don't want you to come under or be subdued by all these other creatures. No, I want you to rise above. And today we who are in Christ Jesus, we know that though Satan took that authority. When man sinned, 
What did Jesus do for us? Once again, Jesus gave us the authority. That's how you know, Jesus said things like, I give you the keys of the kingdom. Why? The devil is now defeated. Okay? It's no longer his authority. I have given you the authority. The church has the authority. So we can now fulfill the purposes of God. We can release our authority through prayer. So that is why we must be so eager and excited about praying. We can also engage in prayer because uh, I told us that it's a ministry. Right? We want to serve someone, we can pray for them. Now, if you look at the life of Job, Job in the Bible, uh, you would uh, remember that he went through a lot of difficulties. He went through so many challenges. And in that time, when he's going through a lot of difficulty, you know, he makes this um, statement in uh, uh, Job 9 and then Job 16. Uh, he, he says, I wish there was at least one person who would pray for me. So when people are going through difficult situations, I don't know if you have experienced this, but uh, I can relate to this. When you're going through a tough time, sometimes we just, maybe we're not even able to pray, right? Uh, in those moments, it's so great if somebody else is praying for us. Okay, when somebody else is upholding us in prayer. Uh, so why should we pray? Because when we pray, we are able to help others. You understand the way Job wanted somebody. If somebody prays for me, it will be so nice. Uh, in that manner, today, we can be those people who are praying for others. And we are helping them actually. When we pray for them, we are helping them in the spiritual realm. So that's another reason to pray. Uh, and why should we pray another, uh, you know, these days, mm, uh, we, we want rewards. Even if people shop, they are like, okay, how many points did I get? What are the rewards, compensation? What am I going to get? So people want rewards, isn't it? Look at this. Jesus in his teaching about prayer, he also said, if you go pray in secret, then what will happen? Matthew 6, 6, the Father will reward you openly. So there is another reason why you and I must spend time in prayer. There is a reward. Okay. So uh, is it okay to want a reward from God? I think it's fine. I mean, God wants to give the reward, no? So it, it should be fine. Uh, so we can receive a reward from God when we practice this, this personal devotion with God. Okay, whenever we are praying, let's remember this. Yeah, I'm spending time with God. Um, and uh, maybe initially it's challenging to sit and pray, to focus on God. But remember, there's also a reward. Jesus said, if you go, shut your door, you pray in secret, the Father will reward you openly. So God will also bless us is what he is saying when we pray. So again, let me just quickly go over all the reasons why we must pray. Firstly, because it is God's design uh, and it will work. Secondly, we are saying that um, we will be able to release that dominion that God has given us through prayer. Thirdly, we are saying we can help people uh, or bless people through prayer. And fourth is that there is a reward associated with the life of prayer. Uh, so all this is an encouragement for us to actually pray. Now, what will happen if we do not pray? If we don't pray, what will happen? If we pray, so many wonderful things will happen. If we don't pray, what will happen? Hmm. Okay, nice. So Sagar is saying the blessing that God has for us, we, are not, we won't receive it. It won't come into our lives. Yep, that's true. We'll miss the reward. No, he said there's a reward. So we're missing the reward. What if we don't pray? What will happen? Okay, Serene says, no connection with God. 
all right that makes sense so then you're not developing your relationship with god and um elder eric dennis says no communion with god that's true no fellowship with god what will happen if we don't pray okay very nice sister god cannot work in our lives okay uh, so we had one answer in class uh, where aman said that uh, uh, lucifer will attack or satan right the kingdom of darkness can uh, have an easier access into our lives that's correct and uh, uh, sister getrude can you come again please can you share your oh, point god, uh, god cannot work in our lives he cannot bless us ha huh. so god mm, we won't see god working in our lives he won't bless our lives true uh, partnership is lost uh, says lucy yeah so all these things will happen you lose sight of the presence of god there is a disconnect isn't it so we are not praying we are just doing ha huh? i have to do all these things activities christian activities sometimes it happens we are so busy worship cleaning this that but we are not spending time with god relationship not much activities full and we are so tired by the end of the day but we are actually missing out on that you know precious practice of prayer then all these things that we are talking about you know losing our relationship with god losing that connect with the presence of god and opening the door for satan to attack uh, no blessing all these things happen so it it is actually a risk for a believer if we are a believer and we are not praying it's a huge risk that we are taking uh, and and you know we we are um, not utilizing uh, the opportunity for prayer that god has given us so here there are some thoughts listed uh, regarding what happens when we don't pray it says you lose the opportunity to invite god to work in life situations and other matters then we fail in our responsibility on the earth when we don't pray and we fail to receive personally into our lives when we don't pray and uh, i'm sure nobody wants that so it's just better for us to uh, invest time in prayer now let's move ahead okay one more uh, thought uh, that eric dennis is sharing temptation we we get into temptation okay and we may miss out what god wanted to give us all right that's true uh, in the lord's prayer there is that line lead us not into temptation so when there is temptation when we are facing temptation what is a good thing to do pray when we have a, a a you know a good prayer life we can overcome temptation better so that is true so we will overcome temptation better uh, and daniel is saying when we don't pray we are worldly all right yeah so when we don't pray we miss that connection with god and sanjay says our prayers can be the light in the darkness sure yeah because we are releasing the purposes of god he has called us to be salt and light uh, so when we pray we act as the light in the darkness all right so these are all um, reasons why we must pray so i really hope that um, what we are learning will help us to develop our prayer life Okay, so let's not just treat this like, okay, I have to finish the course, I have to write the assignments, I have to pass, I have to go to the next semester. We understand all that, but more than that, whatever I'm learning, is it helping me apply? How has my prayer life changed? That's the question that we want all of us to consider. All right, uh, fine. So let's move forward. We'll go to the second chapter here. which says uh, the foundation for prayer so we can pray correctly effectively if we have a good foundation 
right so if the foundation of this building is strong this building will um you know it it will last for many years to come uh, and uh, people can sort of benefit from this building but what do you need for a good building or a tall building you need a strong foundation okay uh, what if you have a tall building and a very poor small foundation we won't even enter that building because it's going to crash to tomorrow or you know sometime it will crash because there is no foundation so in the same way for us to develop an effective successful prayer life we must have a good understanding of what prayer is about and what prayer is not uh, and how exactly god wants us to pray so that is what we will discuss in this chapter uh, what let's quickly touch on the wrong foundation what is the wrong foundation for prayer um when we look at prayer as a ritual okay i i'll explain ritual means uh you know in some religions and philosophies they have disciplines they say that okay you must wake up at a certain time and you have to do this you have to do that you have to wash your hands you have to you know turn around so many things are there these are all activities which help you know the understanding is uh, it helps in their spirituality so it becomes a ritual you don't give much thought to it you just do it because you're supposed to do it so in the same way in our life as a believer if we are treating prayer like a ritual um you know how it is right sometimes for us believers when you wake up morning prayer when you when you are going to have breakfast you have to pray then you know when you're going to bed you thank you jesus for this day you know bless me as i sleep protect me this and that okay amen sleep it's just a ritual this time i have to pray that time i have to pray and uh, i'm just practicing it i don't even think about it i don't even worry about my connect with god i just keep doing it so praying as a ritual it's not that beneficial okay so prayer should not be treated as a ritual you have to pray we have to pray like a rule it's not like that there is so much more to prayer we mustn't treat prayer as a ritual then prayer as an obligation or a religious duty so sometimes we may think if i don't pray god will get angry i don't know what will happen today oh i missed my prayer i hope god doesn't get angry we we take it like a religious duty i have to do it because god requires it of me again there's no heart behind it right so it's not god is not you know pushing us uh, to to make us do our religious duty did you pray today did did you do this today did you say this scripture today god doesn't treat us like that so prayer is not a religious duty or an obligation where you know you have to do it so that's not how it works again a prayer is not lip service lip service means that uh, you know sometimes we can say things that we don't mean like even for example uh, it's very unfortunate but it happens even the lord's prayer we may say it our father in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom like i am not connected to what i am saying i am saying something but maybe in my heart i'm thinking about lunch or i'm thinking about tea right so what's this it's just lip service where i it's not about my relationship with god it's just lip service or the pharisees in the in the scripture we know that they said something oh god you are so great and this and that but their lives were not genuine right following god so what we understand here is see god is not looking for a show how well we can pray it doesn't matter to god because he sees our heart so prayer is not a lip service where we uh try to please god with the words that we are speaking so prayer is not that then prayer is not twisting god's arm twisting god's arm means 
uh, have you all seen when uh, sometimes um, you know uh, like uh, in in uh, industries and all they have these unions right and they will have their demands they say oh you must pay us so much you must give us leave you must do this you must do that but when the uh, maybe the company is not answering their demands fast what most of the time what do they do they'll fast right they'll do in hindi they'll say bhook hartal they just do one hartal and they'll say if you don't then we will not eat we will not drink water it's like threatening isn't it so is prayer that are we threatening god god i'm praying five times i'm praying 10 times i'm fasting i'm giving i'm serving in the church now you have to help me you have to bless me it doesn't it doesn't make sense that's not the scriptural way that we pray so twisting god's arm means uh, it's like forcing god i am doing all this you better do this it should not prayer is not that so uh, we must remember it i know sometimes maybe because of um, our past patterns of thinking we still continue like that maybe we have seen people they say that oh i'm giving god this offering i'm giving god that offering i did this ritual so i know god will help me right but in the biblical uh, sense our relationship with god is not transactional meaning give and take i'll give you this you give me that prayer doesn't work like that it's more of a relationship so we must be careful not to twist god's arm or i will make god bless me we can't do that then what else about prayer is wrong uh, prayer without faith you know sometimes we can just say that ah prayer is good so i have to pray i'm praying but we may not believe we we may say something like uh, uh, okay god you know uh, i want i want you to help me uh, to choose the right career but somewhere in our hearts we don't have faith that god will help me so we have backup plan right plan b plan c plan d i'm asking god he may or may not help then i will do something else so praying without believing is also uh, something that we don't see in scripture so when we pray we need to be intentional and we need to understand that yeah god wants me to pray these things i'm sure god is going to answer he's going to guide me so having that belief and praying is important then praying to prove one's spirituality okay, and how superior we are so going back to the pharisees uh, jesus said you know they used to stand in public and they used to pray all these wonderful prayers but he told he taught about prayer and said please don't do that go into the secret and only your father in heaven is watching you in prayer he will reward you openly so when we uh, when we engage in prayer as public display so maybe you know we pray in very good language uh, some cambridge english and everything we think oh god will get impressed my language is amazing for god i don't think it matters that much as much as it's genuine it's coming from our hearts right so this public display is for what to please people only people can get pleased and they might say oh they pray so nicely they pray so long <laughs> sometimes praying long uh, can get you some appreciation but for god it doesn't matter and that's not genuine prayer right so let's be careful of these things so to prove our spirituality to pray nicely or pray a lot of scriptures we are quoting a lot of scriptures quoting a lot of you know um, some uh, quotes and uh, some names of uh, godly men and women only the people will get impressed but what is the point god should get impressed isn't it so proving our spirituality through prayer that's something that we must keep away from then uh, praying without knowing god's instructions on prayer when we learn from the word of god uh, how what are the promises right and what is god's heart what are the purposes of god and then we pray it's more likely that our prayer will be successful 
isn't it but if we don't go by that we are going by whatever we think we want it may not necessarily happen in our lives okay uh, so it's something like you know jonah jonah's story where uh, god says uh, i want you to go to to nineveh i want you to go minister to the people uh, tell them about me but what did jonah do his plan is different he say oh god i don't want to go there they are terrible people i'll go to tarshish i'll escape okay but you see the purposes of god are something else but here we are we are doing something else we need to first find out god what do you want me to do what does your word say about this what does your plan say right so when i first take all that and then i start to pray in line with what god wants then i will see the results but if i'm doing something opposite i won't see the results so these are all the things that we must remember and that is why we are studying about prayer so that we can understand the principles we can understand what the word of god says then when we pray it will be effective okay now uh, the last point which is given here is being more concerned about our eloquence okay or having a people pleasing attitude when we pray when in public when we pray uh, you know we may want to please the people around us that's also the wrong attitude to pray so anything else that uh, you see as the wrong way to pray or the wrong foundation for prayer i've discussed quite a few but anything more you you may want to add to this Sister, praying to God without confessing your sins. Hmm. So praying to God without confessing our sins. Hmm. Yeah, we could say so uh, because we know that in the Lord's prayer also uh, Jesus taught us. He there is that statement which says, "Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us." So forgiveness is important. but if you are not practicing it and then we are expecting god to answer our prayers uh yeah we may we may find that we are not getting answers because of that you're right mm so unforgiveness uh bitterness in our hearts will hinder the answers to prayer what prayer is what is a wrong foundation for prayer sorry praying against the will of god yeah yeah so uh, basically you've expanded on what i said earlier i said that you need to know the uh, word the instructions on prayer and then pray but what you're saying is if you're praying against for example you know we will talk about all these things later the will of god is the i'm giving you a very broad example in the bible it says right second coming of jesus it will happen the second coming of jesus now if i pray lord uh i no need second coming okay you change your plan you do something else you think my prayer will be answered no i'm going against the plan of god i can't pray such prayers because it's not in the bible it's not according to his instruction so if i pray something opposite i won't see the results of that isn't it so same thing applies in many other areas we have to be careful to know the instructions of god's word or let's say you know sometimes we have prayers like uh, oh that person was so evil to me uh, i pray let him you know let him be sick or let him god do this terrible thing in in their life or something we pray something evil over them do you think such prayers are valid i i remember once somebody told me and i i i wanted to laugh but i didn't laugh they said that uh, somebody who was uh, very rude to them uh, they were digging a well 
in their house. So apparently this person prayed, let there be no water. God, I pray, no water. They should never get water, no matter how deep they dig. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, that's a wrong foundation for prayer. I don't think God is going to listen to prayers like that. Because it's not part of his nature, isn't it? So things like this, we have to understand who is this God that we are praying to? What does he want? What is his heart? What is the purpose? Then you pray, then you receive the answer. But if you're praying opposite, obviously it can't happen. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, I think some good thoughts here. Fine. So, uh, there are all these wrong foundations, but let's talk about the right foundation or the strong foundation. So, I am going to list out all the truths for the right foundation and stop there. We will pick it up in the next class. So, what are these? these um, uh, you know seven truths one is understanding the nature of God you know uh, who is this God that we are praying to so when I understand the nature of God I can pray correctly and receive answers second intimacy with God to have a strong relationship with God when I have a strong relationship remember I said Jesus had such a strong relationship with the father he was praying a lot. He was strengthening his walk with the Lord. And in the life of Jesus, we see success. Maybe one, one word, be healed. No. A demon, come out. Everything he's saying is happening. Why? Because he was functioning from a place of strong connect. Or we use the word intimacy. Intimacy is closeness with God. Then redemptive heart of God. Redemptive heart of God we'll discuss later. It simply means that God is a God who restores. He's a God who um, uh, redeems. Okay? He redeems. He Even if something is destroyed, usually we find that he will work in such a way that even the destruction will turn into something beautiful. That's the way our God works. So the redemptive heart of God, we will talk about that. Uh, we can pray based on the promises of God. If God has given that promise, we can pray through and we will see the results. Uh, partnering with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit can help us when we are praying. That is also uh, uh, very strengthening in our prayer journey. Understanding our position in Christ and living a life of surrender. So I've just listed it out for us today, but we will look at each one in, in, um, uh, in depth when we come back next week. All right, so uh, if there are questions, we can take it up. But if there are no questions, let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, yes, uh, Kofi. Yeah, I would like to know, is it wrong for me to uh, say that God should not let anybody who is a sinner in my family to die? This kind of prayer, is it good? Uh, Kofi, could you come again? I didn't hear the first part of your question. I want to know, would it be classified as a wrong way of prayer if I ask God or I pray God should not let someone who is a sinner in my family to die. Is it a wrong uh, God, prayer? God should not let anyone who is a? A sinner. Sinner, meaning they are not born again? Yes, to die uh, in my family. Okay. So you don't want anyone who is not born again to die? Yeah. Meaning you want them to live and be saved? And, and repent, yeah. Okay. So it's a valid prayer, uh, Kofi, uh, because we we do have a scripture. Let me just um, mm. Second Peter three nine. Uh, it says the Lord uh, is not slow to anger, 
about his promise as some count slowness, but is patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. So the prayer that you're praying is based on the scripture. Even God does not want them to die without knowing him. Therefore, your prayer is a valid prayer. And it's a good thing. Thank prayer. you. Sure. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. So let's uh, wrap up. Um, would anyone like to pray and close? Yeah. You can just take the mic and pray, please. Heavenly Father, we come in your presence, Lord. Thank you for this time, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you for helping us. Thank you for teaching us the importance of prayer. You yourself was the example of prayer, Lord Jesus. Help us to implement in our lives from today, oh Father. Thank you for teaching us more and more, oh Father. Holy Spirit, we commit this day in your hands. Teach us more. We want more from you. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask and pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, everybody. So meet you next week. God bless you. Have Thank a wonderful you, afternoon.